Welcome back to Amashiroi Recap. Today, I will recap, Gate, thus the JSDF fought there. The story begins with a 33-year-old Otaku. He is named Itami Yaoji and has a military background. But he always put his hobbies first and never took his job seriously. When Itami wants to go to an anime and manga convention, suddenly, a giant gate appears that connects the two worlds. When the gates opened, the medieval armies even contained monsters that attacked residents. Knowing this, Itami quickly headed to the location and protected the citizens about to be attacked by the Imperial soldiers. After that, Itami asked the police to immediately evacuate the residents to the gate so that the residents could be protected there. After calling their superior, they started to follow his orders. Then came the Japanese Special Defense Forces to fight the troops from the Empire. Japanese defense troops easily slaughtered all troops from the Empire because the bullets of firearms easily penetrated the Empire's iron shield. <laughs> After the incident, Itami earned the nickname Hero of Jinza, because Itami saved the citizens there and was promoted to first lieutenant. <laughs> he is unhappy with his new position and now has much more responsibility than he would like. He only works to pay for his hobby because being an otaku is his only life. The Prime Minister of Japan announced that they would send JSDF units through the gates. After three months of special preparation and training, the new Prime Minister of Japan announced that the JSDF is now ready to deploy special assignments. Itami stood among the lines of troops prepared for battle as he passed through the gate, the area referred to as the Special Region. After entering the gate, hundreds of thousands of troops were ready to block Arnis Hill. Two days later, in the Imperial capital, Kaisel explains that the Empire has lost 60% of its military power because its troops met the JSDF at Arnis Hill and were completely obliterated. The Emperor knew that they would not be able to win against the JSDF, so he also intended to reduce the combat power of other kingdoms so that other kingdoms would not attack or take over the weakened empire. What a cunning and extraordinary plan from the Emperor. They planned their attack the next morning, but the Imperial Army still had not arrived. An army commander in a kingdom named Durin became suspicious when the Imperial troops were nowhere to be seen. The Alliance troops numbered 300,000, while the JSDF was only 10,000. They never had before seen modern weaponry and were completely helpless against the JSDF. So their first attack resulted in about 10,000 deaths, and the second attack resulted in 40,000 deaths from the Royal Alliance troops. Durin planned to attack at night but was unsuccessful. The enemy signaled with a beacon and shot down their troops even though shields were no match for bullets. <laughs> the total death toll surpassed 100,000, and the Emperor's plan to neutralize the surrounding region's forces were successful. They no longer had the strength to take over the Imperial capital. Then the Emperor sent Princess Pinya to the city of Arnis to monitor the movements of the JSDF. On the other hand, the President of the United States decided to sit back and wait until the Japanese operation failed. Itami is assigned to lead the 3rd Reconnaissance team to learn the language and establish good relations with the local people. They arrived at the village of Kota and wanted to establish good relations and get information. But when they continued their journey, they met a dragon setting fire to the forests. Itami realized that in the forest, there was a village. After the fire dragon left, Itami and the others rushed to the village where the fire dragon attacked. Searching for survivors seems futile as everything has been reduced to ashes. When they decided to report back, Itami found someone unconscious at the bottom of the well. <coughs> <coughs> Yeah. 
Itami immediately saved her and administered first aid. She's an elven girl named Tuka Luna. They decide to take her back to Kota Village. When the townspeople learned about the dragon attack, they immediately started packing their things and leaving the village, including a young witch named Lele and her master. Lele was curious when she saw the JSDF, so she investigated. But she was saved by the JSDF when a startled horse wanted to trample her. So she made sure that the JSDF was a good person. <laughs> On the other hand, a group of bandits intends to attack the villagers while they are running away. Suddenly there was a girl wielding a gigantic spear weapon. She showed no mercy as she slaughtered a group of bandits without any remorse. Rory the Reaper is a demigoddess and an apostle of Imroy, the god of war, violence, and death. <laughs> The third reconnaissance team helped escort the refugees. Before continuing their journey, they saw some crows in the sky. It was Rory. The kids call her a messenger of God and rush to meet her. Rory was interested in riding a car, so Rory sat on Itami's lap and joined Itami's troop. <laughs> They could continue their journey, but suddenly the previous fire dragon appeared and attacked them. Itami and the others attacked the dragon, but even the .50 caliber didn't work. Tuka suddenly woke up and suggested Itami strike the fire dragon's eyes. Apart from firing shots at the dragon's eyes, they also prepared RPGs. Oh. Ultimately, they managed to injure the dragon's arm, and the dragon fled in terror after being hit by an RPG. The refugees thanked the third reconnaissance team and fled to another city, leaving several stragglers in the third reconnaissance team, including Tuka, Lele, Rory, and several children. Itami decided to bring them back to Arnis Hill as refugees. Tuka awakens from a nightmare of her father sacrificing himself to save Tuka. Itami was scolded for bringing refugees back to base without reporting. JSDF Lieutenant General Heizama was happy to hear that because he could get information about that world from the refugees. Lele learns Japanese faster than others, and they can communicate easily. On the other hand, in China, President De Chu Dong believed that the special region would be more profitable if the gate appeared in his country. He wanted to maintain friendly relations with Japan and was prepared to send half its population to a special region if the opportunity arose. Lele, Rory, and Tuka admired the indoor bath and discussed the world outside the gate. There are more countries than they think, so they find it interesting to know the world that lies beyond the gates. Princess Pinya met King Durin, who had survived the battle, but he had been seriously injured. Durin also tells the truth about what has happened on the battlefield, and thinks the Empire is the real enemy. Pinya was surprised to hear this because she did not know the cunning plan that the Emperor had carried out. Durin also advised Pinya to go to Arnis Hill, so Pinya and her knights went to Italica, which is adjacent to Arnis Hill. Tuka still can't believe her father died with the others. She always asks for additional men's clothing and equipment. Itami and the others confirmed that Tuka could not accept that the fire dragon had killed her father. Itami and his team travel to Italica to continue their mission and learn the trades of the special region. While heading to Italica, they saw smoke from a distance. It turned out that Italica city had been surrounded by alliance troops who had become bandits. Princess Pinya, who led the battle, could stop their attacks, but they lacked combat power. After the battle, Pinya rested in the town owner's manor. She dreams of her childhood and starting her army of knights, though all the nobles treat her as a joke. But now she finally had the chance to prove the strength of the Rose Knight squad. The third reconnaissance team has arrived in front of the city gates. The knight asks them to show themselves. Seeing Rory the Reaper, Pinya decided to open the gate, and Itami was not considered an enemy. <laughs> Itami and Pinya work together to help defend the city. Pinya alerts the third reconnaissance team to guard the heavily damaged south gate. Itami realized that they were being used as bait. Itami 
Rory wondered why Itami would want to help Pinya. He explains that he wants to protect the people of Italica Town and show the princess that they are not enemies, and forge good relations instead of fighting each other. Hearing that excited Rory, she was going to assist Itami in battle. At night the bandits did not attack the south gate but broke through the east gate. Night Pinya fights to defend, but Pinya feels hesitant to act when she sees the horror of the battlefield for the first time. She wanted to ask Itami for help, but she realized she had no right to ask Itami for help because she had made Itami a sacrifice at the south gate. On the other hand, General Hezama received a request for help from Itami. Because the ground troops were too slow, they sent an air combat unit to help the battle raging in Italica. Many soldiers died during the battle, so Rory could barely hold back. Lele explained that the souls of the soldiers who died on the battlefield would be sent to Amloy through her body, and that would make her aroused. To be free from that, Rory only needs to fight. Rory immediately ran towards the battle at the east gate with Itami, and the third reconnaissance team in tow. On the other hand, the air combat unit headed for Italica and was ready to attack them at sunrise. When she arrived at the east gate, Rory immediately cut down the biggest bandit with one strike. Also, an air combat unit appeared, eliminating the bandits trying to escape outside the gate. <laughs> Meanwhile, the bandits inside the gate were handled by Rory and Kiribayashi. They both protect each other. <laughs> the air combat unit tells Itami and the others to stay away, as they will use Gatling guns to knock out the remaining enemy troops. Princess Pinya was aware of the JSDF's terrible combat power at that time. When the battle was over, Rory hit Itami for touching her boobs. Then they carried out negotiations and a peace agreement. The JSDF got tax-free trade in Italica and the area around Arnis. Not only that, the JSDF will take some prisoners to their base. On their way back, the third reconnaissance team encountered Princess Pinya's Rose Troop. But they weren't that friendly. Ultimately, Itami asked his troops to run away while the Rose troops were holding him. The third reconnaissance team staked out the town, waiting to save Itami. Hirabayashi was surprised to learn that the relaxed looking Itami was a ranger who was a trained and strong soldier. <laughs> On the other hand, Pinya scolded her knight, Boses, because she had oppressed Itami. Pinya was worried about the consequences of breaking the agreement. Gray suggests they apologize to avoid war. Otherwise, the JSDF will destroy the Empire. Pinya orders Boses to make amends, even if it means offering her body to Itami. Meanwhile, the third reconnaissance team intends to save Itami. Tuka uses her magic to paralyze the guards, and they can sneak into the city of Italica. Meanwhile, Itami is cared for and pampered by beautiful maids. Of course, Itami felt happy when cared for by a beautiful maid. The third reconnaissance team arrived at Itami's place, and as there were no problems, they had a great time there and had a cultural exchange. Boses appeared at the door in a sundress. Cheese! <laughs> <laughs> Upon entering, she looked at everyone taking pictures together. Feeling ignored, she became angry and slapped Itami again. <laughs> Tomorrow Pinya decided to go with Itami to apologize to General Heizama on Arnis Hill in person. Pinya meets with General Heizama and apologizes for injuring Itami. Itami invited Tuka with Rory to talk to the Japanese government and Lele, a translator. Not only that, Pinya and Boses also went with them. Itami and the others go to Japan. They are fascinated by the advancement of civilization that Japan has made. Pinya was now convinced Empire could not win the war against Japan. Itami was greeted by the public safety intelligence agency named Kamikado. He had conducted his investigation and discussed all of Itami's accomplishments. Even though he is a lazy otaku, 
He is a ranger in special forces. Kuribayashi instantly couldn't believe that Itami was in the special forces and had so much achievement. Then they head to the parliament building, but Pinya and Bozes don't come with them. Instead, they head to a secret meeting with the foreign minister. On the other hand, when the trial begins, a member of parliament named Mizuki is determined to paint the JSDF badly. She blamed the third reconnaissance team for the 150 civilian casualties in the previous fire dragon attack. Itami calmly replied that dragons were powerful, and they lacked weapons. The other MPs explained the results of the analysis. They concluded that dragon scales were comparable to tungsten. In other words, it was like a giant flying tank that could spit fire. Expecting no casualties when fighting dragons is impossible. After that, Lele discussed that JSDF properly met all her refugee camp needs. When Tuka came to the pulpit dazzled everyone with her long ears. Tuka couldn't talk about the events of the dragon attack because she was unconscious. When Rory came to the stand, Mizuki tried to accuse the JSDF, who had run away and not done their job properly. Because only civilians were victims, the JSDF had no victims. Rory defended Itami with the third reconnaissance team as they survived against the fire dragon. It has even saved 450 other civilians. Mizuki was upset because Rory was so condescending to her. She thought Rory was just a little girl. Itami immediately explained that Rory was 961 years old, Tuka was 165 years old, and Lele was 15. <laughs> Lele explains that Rory is a demigoddess who will become a god at 1000. After parliament finished, they use the bus as bait to distract troops from other countries. They meet Pinya with Bozes in the subway. However, Rory felt uncomfortable underground and they stopped midway. Since there was nowhere to go that was safe, Itami decided to bring everyone to Reese's apartment. She was Itami's ex-wife. Even though the place was cramped, they had no other choice, so they slept there for the time being. Pinya and Bozes get a new hobby, which is reading, DL Comics. Meanwhile, Risa told Tamita that she and Itami were still friends after their divorce, so there was no animosity between them. The next day they went shopping, and Risa chose new clothes for the three of them. Pinya and Bozes go to the library, but unfortunately, they are not finding the BL Comics there. Itami went to the manga shop. Unexpectedly he met a named Minister of Defense Kanu Taru. They have known each other for 20 years and are now good friends. He asked Itami to head to the inn guarded by special forces. During changing clothes, Rory felt someone watching them. <laughs> he immediately moved his place after feeling Rory's murderous aura. The women at the hot springs wonder about Itami's marriage to Risa. Risa explained that they had known each other since they were little, and the marriage continued comfortably. But after the Jinza incident, Itami would go to a special region. Risa was apprehensive about Itami's safety, but Itami was insensitive to Risa's feelings, so she filed for divorce. The special forces are fighting intruders who want to kidnap guests from the special region. But the Japanese special forces are powerful and the intruders have a hard time getting close to the inn. <laughs> On the other hand, the President of the United States contacted Maroi, the Japanese Prime Minister. Cabinet ministers have been implicated in corruption and bribery. For information not to leak, the President of the United States asked the Japanese Prime Minister to withdraw the troops guarding Itami. The Prime Minister also had no choice and ordered the Minister of Defense for the Special Forces to withdraw. Rory becomes excited and cannot contain herself as the fighting around the inn results in heavy casualties. She also asked Itami to satisfy her, otherwise, she would join the fight against the intruder. Oh. <laughs> Itami, who was having difficulty holding himself back, was saved by his cell phone that suddenly rang. So it annoyed Rory for disturbing someone who was making out. Then the United States troops met with Chinese and Russian soldiers. Rory came out of the inn to slaughter them. 
There was a very fierce battle between the three armies. The invincible Rory manages to kill all of these troops single-handedly. They were shocked when they saw the many corpses there. Itami gathered everyone and told them to get weapons that they could use. They find a van, and Lully stuns the man with magic. The President of the United States is very angry with Graham, who was in charge of the operation, who lost his team without capturing the target. When stopped at a convenience store, Risa made the news on the internet that guests from the special region would be visiting the Jinza Monument. To trigger a crowd, and enemy agents will have a hard time moving. The next day, there was news about the Prime Minister resigning. Katami and the others were stuck in traffic because the fans were overwhelming. She was well received when Rory exited the car, and the fans made way for them. With that, they could reach in front of the gates safely. After they placed the flowers at the Jinza Monument, they returned to the special region. At that time, they were greeted by thousands of people with great fanfare, which made them amazed. Back to the special region, Pinya returned to the Imperial capital to conclude a peace treaty to end the war. After five months had passed, the refugee settlement had become a small town, and it was easy for them to trade with each other. On the other hand, Pinya and the Minister of Foreign Affairs named Sugawara conducted peace negotiations in secret. They aimed to persuade Saisro's nobles to help them reach a peace treaty. Sugawara brought gifts from Japan, including a katana. He was amazed at how extraordinary Japanese handicrafts were, but the empire was still at war with Japan. Pinya offers it and the freedom of his nephew, who is being held for his part in the Jinza incident. Hearing that, he helped in the peace agreement. A dark elf woman saw Rory getting so close to Itami that she accused him of wanting to abuse little girls. Itami panicked and quickly ran away, while Rory had also disappeared. It turned out that his purpose in coming was to ask for help from the JSDF to kill the fire dragon that had destroyed his village. But she had no idea that Itami was the one fighting the fire dragon. The next day Itami had to go to the capital to help with the peace talks. No one could understand her language when the Dark Elf wanted to ask the JSDF to help save her clan from the Fire Dragon's attack. Since she looked desperate, Lele offered to ask JSDF for help. General Heizama explains that since the Schwartz Forest is outside of the Empire's territory in the Elba Kingdom, it will disrupt peace talks and trigger conflict. Lieutenant Yanajita notices Yao's mental breakdown and mentions that Itami may be the only one mad enough to aid her in fighting the Fire Dragon. Princess Pinya and one of her knights, Hamilton, await Itami and the Japanese diplomat to deliver Japanese goods to win more nobles to their cause. Pinya is also happy to receive the BL comic they brought back from Japan. The group of soldiers noticed how grieving Yao was. They couldn't bear it and wanted to help her. But it takes a lot of weapons to fight the Fire Dragon. So they mentioned that Itami might be her last hope. The comic contained information about Itami, nicknamed the Hero of Jinza, and Pinya was amazed at how great Itami was for doing so many great things. And that is the end of the video. Remember to subscribe and like this video, so see you in the next video.